Now I'd like to introduce our speaker, uh, Staff Sergeant Retired David Hack. He enlisted in the Army in 1964, volunteering for Ranger training. In 1968, he volunteered for Vietnam, joining the 1st Infantry Division. He was serving as, lieutenant, uh, as a Sergeant in Vietnam in 1968 when he was awarded the Purple Heart for combat injuries that ultimately ended his military career. Subsequent, subsequently, the Department of the Army asked uh, Heck to be a recruiter, and he was assigned the Akron, Cuyahoga Falls, Talmadge, Ohio area. He gained nationwide recognition as a top Army recruiter. His distinctive recruiting tools, which included Sergeant Hack Once You t-shirts, a custom Army Jeep, and a custom painted Corvette, helped Sergeant Hack, the United States number one U.S. Army recruiter, out of 12,000 recruiters in, from 1969 to 1973. He was number one. The Jeep is used on display at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, home of the 101st Airborne Division. The only other Jeep ever to be enshrined in a U.S. military museum belonged to General George Patton, whose Jeep is enshrined in Fort Knox. This guy gave a lot of guys some unique vacations. We'd like to welcome Sergeant David Hack. Oh, he's still recruiting. Good afternoon, everyone, and, and thank you so much for coming out. I sincerely mean it, and it's a great sacrifice to you to stand here and sit here in the hot sun. It means a lot to me, and it means a lot to everyone. It really does. And to set the record straight, I know the Navy and the Army have never gotten along too well. And he said Staff Sergeant. And you know what? A lot of people even said I never was a sergeant. But I retired as a SFC, Sergeant First Class. Same thing as a Chief Petty Officer. <laughs> I learned something long time ago. And that is, united we stand, divided we fall. And that's a fact. I was in the hospital for a year in Fort Knox, Kentucky. And in that hospital room, I, I said, what can I do to help my fellow soldier? And I says, you know what? I'm going to become a recruiter. And with that said, I only lost one person that I recruited. And he was from Akron, Ohio. He was killed in his sleep and a mortar round came through the roof. And he was a pencil pusher. And the reason that I was the nation's number one recruiter ever is because I trained soldiers. I sent them to school. And that was extremely important to me. Sending soldiers to school so they could come out and get a job, get a profession, support a family, and not draw unemployment. And that was my secret. I trained 20 men every month from 1964, I'm, I'm sorry, from 1969 to 1973. Education's it, plain and simple. And speaking about education, I have to give kudos to this school. My daughter, was, well, wasn't a wayward person, but she just didn't have the ambition. She came up here and she talked to these counselors at this school and she said, I want to give back. And now my daughter has three children and she is a deaf translator. She gave back and Tri-C was responsible.
Her name is Brittany Hack. She has three beautiful children. And she gave back. And that's what life's all about. Giving back. It has nothing to do with what can you do for yourself. It has everything to do with what you can do for one another. Look at all this fighting and bigotry. My God. I've never seen so much in all my life. In two years, if the good Lord's willing, I'll be 80 years old. I have never seen so much dividedness in all my life. It's not what you do for yourself. It's what you can do for one another. You don't have to give them money. Just kindness, plain and simple. There's an awful lot of four-letter words, an awful lot. And the best four-letter word I can think of, folks, is love. And the next four-letter word is home. That's it, home. When we were in Vietnam, and you guys know it, all we talked about is when we were going home. That's all we talked about. And why did we want to go home? Because we knew love was there. Love was there. And love should always be there. If love is in your home, you don't have to worry about divorces. You don't have to worry about jealousy. You don't have to worry about bigotry. How many times did we hear when we were in combat, we do not have bigotry in a foxhole? We don't have atheists in a foxhole either. <laughs> right? Not one time. You know not one time did we have bigotry or atheists in a foxhole. And you know what? Go to a doctor and say, give me a blood test. And a doctor might be black and say, okay, wait a minute. I got the same color blood as you got. Think about that. We all have the same blood, brothers. We all have the same blood. Plain and simple. And I want to leave you with one thing. And always remember this. You only get back what you give. Thank you.